Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our first webinar of our Saddleback webinar series for this summer. So um, I'm Liz Mangus, Literacy Specialist for Saddleback Educational Publishing, and we have a great session planned for you today. As you are signing in, please locate your control bar, which is at the bottom of your web browser window. That is where you're going to find, most importantly, the chat icon. You are definitely going to need that chat icon today. We have a very interactive session planned for you, and we want you to make the most of it. So um, hopefully you'll, you'll get familiar with that chat area if you're not already. Uh, you'll also have your Q&A area and your live transcript, which is where you can opt in to showing subtitles. So if you want subtitles, go ahead and click on that live transcript option and then select show subtitles. All right, let's go back and talk about the chat for a minute because we want you to chat with us today for sure. So to make sure that we can see and that everybody can see what it is you have to say, select all panelists and attendees from the little drop down menu in that to field so that everybody who is joining us today can see what it is you would have to say. Otherwise, just a few of us at Saddleback will see your message and that is not as much fun. We want everybody to be able to, uh, to interact today. So as you're chatting, select panelists and attendees before you hit send. Uh, as you are listening to the presentation today, if you have questions, you'll want to go ahead and put those in the question and answer area. And what we're going to do this week is we are going to compile all those questions and we are going to answer them uh, via email. Uh, so our, our presenter, Kathy, is being very gracious to make sure that everybody will get an answer to whatever question that you put into that Q&A field today. And if you did submit a question along with your registration, answers to those are uh, woven into the presentation today. All right, here's where you can find us on Twitter, uh, both Saddleback and Dr. Perez are on Twitter. So um, if you want, we highly encourage you to actually go to Twitter, let everybody know you're joining us, uh, let everybody know that you are here for this great learning opportunity today in this very important conversation about trauma. All right, so we'll get started right at three o'clock Eastern time. Let's bring in Kathy, how are you friend? I am terrific, fabulous. I love Wonderful. it. Okay. Now, my favorite part of the beginning of the webinar, who is here? If you could all please go to the chat and select panelists and attendees and let us know, where are you joining us from? Is your school year over yet? Are you on summer break? What is your situation? Let's see what we've got going on here. We've got Fort Lauderdale, San Antonio ISD. All right. Teaching summer school in Pennsylvania. Oh, hi, Solange friend of the webinar series, former presenter. Hopefully she'll come on and join us again. All right, we've got British Columbia, Canada. All right, Pittsburgh, nice to see you. Okay, California. Hi, Luther, I'm in Austin too. We've got Canada. All right, excellent. A lot of Canada, uh, a lot of California, Canada, Florida, um, oh, uh, Virginia, perfect. I love it. Thanks, everybody. Please make sure you're selecting panelists and attendees before you hit send on your chat. That way, everybody can see what it is you are saying. Summer break in Georgia. Fantastic. Do you see anybody uh, uh, you know, uh, Kathy? We've got, um, oh, you probably don't have your chat open, so. Yeah, I do have my oh, chat Oh, you do, open, okay. And uh, I'm just amazed at the diversity of the people that we have and all the corners of the globe. It's wonderful. It's really, this is, I just love seeing everybody come together at the beginning of these webinars. It's my favorite, my favorite part of kicking off these sessions. All right, well, um, Kathy is in California and I'm in Texas. So uh, welcome everybody. It is just about time to get started. So let's make it official. Our topic wow. today is trauma-informed strategies. Uh, we have joining us today, Dr. Kathy Perez. I'm not going to give a full uh, bio because she's going to be introducing herself and letting you know all about who she is as she presents today. But I will say she's an international consultant, uh, a teacher, uh, she's worked with pre-K through graduate students. She's been an administrator. Lots of expertise uh, in, the, in the room today. So, um, Kathy, thank you so much for being here. And I'm going to let you, you take Liz. it from, I'm going to let you take it from here. All right, here we go. 
Let's see. We got to stop that. We got to get that. We got to get my slides. Here we go. All right. And then get rid of these control panels. There. Can you see it? I can see it. Looks good. All right. Great. There's nothing to it but to do it. Let's rock and roll. All right. Okay. Welcome, everybody. I understand there's over 500 registered participants. Not all of you will be tuning in today. And that's cool because, um, you know, there's so many things to do during summertime. You watch at your own pace and your own time. But today we're focusing on trauma informed instruction. Oh, yes. I want to welcome each and every one of you from whatever part of this planet you're on. And we are here to help all students succeed, no matter what their entry point to learning is. And I understand we have a very diverse audience, teachers, principals, superintendents, counselors, librarians, you name it, we got it. So welcome everyone, no matter what your entry point to learning is, Everybody raise your hand up high and proud. I can see you. Get that arm up, bend it at the elbow, and pat yourself on the back. You came to this webinar. You're here to get your brain engaged and to learn some new strategies. And I am here to share the magic. Oh, yes. I never leave home without my magic wand. It reminds me that the real magic in the classroom, it's not the new language art series, the science book, the history text. Nay, nay, nay. The real magic in the classroom is in each and every one of you and the passion you bring to the greatest profession on earth. Well, I'm celebrating my 35th year in the greatest profession on earth, but please don't do the math. You see, I started when I was only five years old. Ha, ha, ha. And uh, I want to share with you, it's going to be an interactive session. So some of the tools you will need, low-tech tools like a writing pad. Oh, yes. And even one of these low-tech pens Oh yes, I want you to have hands-on, minds-on learning, be fully present today for this webinar. And when there are opportunities to join in the conversation in the chat box, please do so as planned. How do you make learning more memorable is the theme today because our job is to empower kids, not enable them and help them empower each other. Now, I want you to get your fist bump like this little dude is. Get that fist bump ready at the count of three. I want you to shout success because that's what this webinar is all about. One, two, three, success. Let's try it again. One, two, three, success. I can't hear you because everyone's on mute, unfortunately. But I know you rock the house wherever you're at, and people are looking at you a little bit strange, but that's cool. Our roadmap today includes many different destinations. I use the analogy of a roadmap when I design training, as well as when I design lessons for my students, because we need to teach with the end in mind. Where is it I want my students to go? And how am I going to navigate them to get there? In a classroom that embraces social emotional learning, we may need to take some detours along the way. We may need to accelerate through certain things. But today, speaking of acceleration, I promise you no less than 27 strategies for your instructional toolkit in 60 minutes or less. What are the outcomes, the key targets for today? Practical interventions for your classroom, your school, your community, your own children. 
the impact of trauma on the brain. Oh yeah, I got a brain right here. Oh yeah. And on the behavior of our students. Multiple ways to create a trauma sensitive classroom and build resilience. It's all about engaging the brain. And yes, I do teach with a lot of tools, toys, and props. So get over it, okay? All right, so here is my brain floss. I invite you to clear out the cobwebs of your brain during this pandemic and keep an open mind as to what's possible, more possible with the students and the children that you interact with. Brain floss, don't leave home without it. My friends in Australia sent me this cartoon. I teach around the planet. If the bum is numb, the brain is the same. So we're not gonna be sitting and getting for this hour, nay, nay, nay. We're gonna be interacting with the material because learning is not a spectator sport, especially when it comes to trauma-informed care. And just because maybe some of you are getting a little stressed out, said, I can't take notes this fast. Have no fear. You've got a robust 26 page handout waiting for you in the chat box to download. Yes, Saddleback is making that available to you. I put it together from my years of experience. Head and heart are gonna work together in the next hour that we share together. Head and heart need to work together in each of your classrooms. But speaking of your heart, how are you feeling right here, right now? Let's feel the pulse of our group. And what I invite you to do right here, right now, is choose the number of the image of one of these beasts here, one of these wonderful animals, and which one depicts how you're feeling right here, right now and put that number in the chat box so Liz can do a shout out for us about okay. what, how you're feeling. And I'll tell you right here, right now, I'm a strong number seven. Oh yes, overjoyed. It says that you gotta do what you love and love what you do. And I love being here with you and I love sharing my strategies with you. So I'm a flaming number seven, overjoyed to be here. Maybe you're feeling a little less than that, like the otter in number nine, or the leaping lamb in number one. Maybe you're like that dude in number six, that dog who just thinks like he's looking pretty startled, or the cute little koala in number two. Liz, what? kind of range do we have in the chat box? You know, I only see one six. I see a lot of nines, people talking about the end of the school year, a lot of sevens, a few twos and threes. Um, so and uh, there's an eight. So they're really kind of all over the map. I will say I'm surprised with all the number sevens that I see. I think that's great. I was really thinking I was going to see a lot more uh, nines, than, but I think sevens are winning. That's what all I All right. Yes. Yay for number seven. But regardless of how you're feeling, and I know that this pandemic has caused undue stress in educators, parents, and children alike, guess what? Stressed spelled backwards equals desserts. So I invite you today to get a second helping of dessert at dinner time tonight. Oh yeah, you deserve it. Tell them Kathy said so. Now, just briefly, a little bit about who am I, because you're not here to get my whole bio. Nay, nay, nay. I am celebrating, as I mentioned, my 35th year in the greatest profession on earth. I have been a general ed teacher, and I had some kids that I just couldn't reach. Do you ever have kids you just can't reach? Amen for that. So I went back and got my degree in special education taught special ed for several years at the elementary as well as the secondary level. 
And then I realized something these kids seem to have in common are challenges with language and literacy. So as teachers, we are lifelong learners. I went back, got my degree as a literacy specialist and an ESL teacher, English as a second language, and taught that for many years. And now I have the privilege and honor of teaching teachers at St. Mary's College of California, nestled in the hills about 30 miles east of San Francisco. Here are some ways for you to keep in touch with me. You can do a shout out on Twitter. You can catch me on Facebook. All of this is on page one in your trusty little handout as well, because I'd love to keep this conversation going. Before pre-pandemic, I used to travel the globe and reach teachers from all areas. This year alone, I had to cancel Oxford, England, Dubai. I canceled Columbia, Singapore, and delivered it virtually instead. It was heartbreaking because I love to interact in person. Social emotional learning is very important to me. Brand new book out this year, as a matter of fact, on that particular topic. Let's get rolling, folks. I want you to get a sheet of scratch paper and I want you to write these initials on it. T T W W A D I. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put you to work today. T T W W A D I. What's that spell? It stands for that's the way we've always done it. Ball it up, ball it up and throw it as far as you can because that's the way we've always done it. Nay, nay, nay. If we do things the way we've always done, we'll get what we've always gotten. We got to think in new ways. We got to keep those ideas and those connections multiplying as we look at what's more possible in our classroom today. So previously, some of you did jot down some questions. I paid attention to those and I'd like to target my presentation in responding on the pre-questions that were received. For instance, this one, what are some ways to have kids express their feelings. Now remember, if you've got additional questions, all you gotta do is jot them in the question box. Liz will summarize those for me and I will get back to you individually. Okay, morning meetings, essential ingredient in any responsive classroom. Morning meetings where kids have time to check in, and kids have time to share their feelings, what's going on, like we just did with the, the memes, and you checked in to tell me how you were feeling. Another way you could depict it is, what is your weather report today? A special ed high school teacher did this, and she has a morning check-in with her kids because they have a short class period at high school level, and the kids just put their name on a post-it note and slap it on the chart right next to the door when they walk in to her class each and every day. So she gets to feel the pulse of how they're doing. I'm great, I'm okay, I'm struggling, I'm in a dark place. Well, whatever it is, the kids can share. And of course, the mass media, films, books, you name it, are really emphasizing emotions even more. Like this great video, the great um, film that was recently out on Inside Out, so kids can name their emotions. For the younger kids, Muppets are where it's at. And I know we have a range of age levels today from preschool to high school. I fit right in. I've taught them all, and now I get the privilege of teaching teachers at St. Mary's College. But what's in your brain today? Oh yeah, I'm asking, what are 
your previous held notions about trauma-informed teaching. And I just want to share with you a quick structure called a window pane activity. And this can be found on page two in your hand in your handbook. And but those of you that don't have not downloaded your handbook, don't sweat it. You get just any ordinary sheet of paper. And this is something you can do with your students as well. Easy low prep strategies is the name of the game. Have them fold a sheet of paper into quadrants, four quadrants resembling a window pane, hence the name window pane. And you ask them various questions that tap into their learning styles. For instance, harvesting their background knowledge because everybody's got a different notion. I think it is, it's important because in this quadrant, if we were in person and had a full day, I'd ask you to write down and draw a symbol for it. What would a symbol for a trauma sensitive classroom be for you? And in this quadrant, what strategies have worked for you? So you can share your own best practice. And in this quadrant, what are you curious about? What do you need to know? So you see a quick write activity is a great brain break for the students. I've got lots of brain breaks to share with you. If you would like a list of age appropriate brain breaks, all you gotta do is email me. I'm happy to share. But that's a whole nother workshop on brain-based teaching. For the sake of time, because we only have an hour together, I'm going to have you do a synectics activity. A synectics activity is one in which you stretch the student's brain. Oh yeah, my slinky is here for this. You stretch the student's brain to help foster divergent thinking. So I have three images on the screen now, a bicycle, a puzzle, and a secret hidden cave. A trauma sensitive classroom is like, and I'd like you to ponder the possibilities. If you were to think of an image of a trauma sensitive classroom, which of these images resonate with you? Dr. Thomas Gordon developed this line of thinking to help with creativity and kids making connections. It's a fabulous tool to use for our English learners as well. If you would like more lessons regarding synectics, I can send them to you. But maybe you'll find something around your workspace right where you're at right now that would depict a trauma-sensitive classroom. For instance, as I look on my desk, I found a magnifying glass. A trauma-sensitive classroom is like a magnifying glass because we've got to look at each child uniquely, each student with their own unique gifts. A trauma-sensitive classroom is like a bicycle because the kids and the teachers need to work together. It's like a puzzle because there are so many pieces of a social emotional program that need to be considered. Like a secret cave because we've got to be able to create that caring, sensitive environment. You choose the image of your choice, please, and put it in the chat box now. If I had music, you would be hearing rock and roll playing right now, but nevertheless, take a moment, which image or perhaps an item at your desktop, literally in your workspace where you're tuning in, maybe you'll find something there that resonates with a trauma sensitive classroom. And I will give you 
oh, 31 seconds to ponder the possibilities. You know, this workshop is quite compact, but I want, I feel that one hour workshops are educational malpractice. Sorry, Saddleback, I said it. But that being said, uh, you got me today, but you got me for your entire career because I welcome correspondence, emails, whatever from each and every one of you. And my email is all over the handout that I have to share with you today. So have no fear. Just because it's short and sweet today doesn't mean we can't have a lifelong relationship. I'd love to share with you some of the many resources I have. So Liz, do we have anything that's showing up? We yeah. sure we sure do. Um, we have Great. thinking thinking putty. I like that one. Um, a lot of people chose the puzzle or the cave. Uh, we have desk plants, Gumby, I like that. Uh, a stapler to bring all the pieces together. Um, and then a couple of people picked bicycle. So I would say that cave and puzzle are the most popular choices from the pictures that you have on the slide. And then a few people picked a few things that were surrounding them on their desks, like thinking putty. All right, well, this is a great catalyst for conversations and it's inclusionary because all kids can participate, all kids can relate to a visual image, even if they can't read the text or whatever. So this is a great way to launch a lesson. Here's another question that came up for me. What is the meaning of trauma and what are implications for practitioners? In other words, what's the fuss about and why is it so important? Well, here's a brief definition if we were to look at all the scientific definitions that are out there, just something short and sweet to share with you today, because I know that many of us have experienced traumatic events in our own lives, and we have our own baggage that we carry with us as well. Some of it is more apparent than not. There are causes for this and lots of different types of traumatic events that can trigger the, the feelings of defeat and the feelings of depression that many of our students might exhibit in our classrooms and in our homes and in our workplace, even our coworkers. So these are some of those traumatic events. And this is just a sample. There are reactions that we might see, reactions, possible reactions to trauma. Maybe you've noticed students who have problems concentrating, thinking, have low self-esteem, have trust issues. These are just a few of some of the visible reactions that we might experience in our home, our schools, our workplace. Why? Why is it so important? Because students will not have internal energy for learning and growth if their safety and belonging needs are not met first. Safety and belonging, key for our classrooms. So there are four essentials of trauma-sensitive classrooms, and they are listed here. We gotta, first and foremost, help our students feel safe. Help them feel connected, connected to each other, connected to you, and connected to their peers to help students get regulated. And this is not a workshop on self-regulation. That's a whole nother workshop that I do if you're interested, but to help them adjust and find some balance in their life. And of course, first and foremost, to help students learn. 
So these are just some essentials. Now trauma goes sometimes unrecognized in the classroom. So these are, on page three, I've summarized this for you. So have no fear, you don't have to take quick notes. But these are some things that every teacher needs to know. There could be classroom issues, acting out, lack of concentration. That could be a sign of childhood trauma. No suicide allowed. See how it says don't assume. Trauma is also associated perhaps with violence, but not always. Sometimes neglect. Uh, a safe classroom with procedures and routines is a great comfort for our kids who come from traumatic home lives. And I used to teach in a community here in California, Richmond, California, very highly diverse urban inner city school district. If some of you have seen the movie Coach Carter, that was one of the high schools I taught at when I was teaching special ed. So that shows the kind of nature of the kids that I have taught. And procedures and routines are what these kids need, what these kids cling to. Kids who have experienced trauma also need time to shine. Let's take a little extra effort and find out where they, do succeed by becoming stars in their own right. And that comes from my years of teaching kids with special education needs. It's okay to ask what you can do to help and to make it safe for the kids to ask for help. But it's fine for you to be there as a caregiver and as a support person. So bottom line, another question, what are some strategies for teachers to create that trauma sensitive classroom? Creating a caring classroom does not happen overnight. We've got to think in terms of inclusion. Inclusion and that involves adopting a whole new set of ABCs, acceptance, belonging and community. And without this set of ABCs, traditional ABCs are not as meaningful as they could be. So another way to look at acceptance, belonging and community is building autonomy with our students as independent learners. Next week, I'm doing a virtual webinar in Singapore on self-directed learning, for instance. Belonging, make each and every student feel like they belong in that classroom and competence. How can they become shining stars in your classroom? And to do that, we got to take a closer look at each and every one of our students. So I'd like you to please watch this brief video and ask yourself, how does this relate to the challenges I face in supporting students with trauma? It's only 80 seconds long, but just enjoy this brief video. Okay, what did you see and how does it relate 
to supporting students with trauma? Well, for me, it's all about the Band-Aid approach doesn't work. We can't just give the kids Band-Aids and expect them to get all better. We've got to start with the how of teaching, not to get away from what am I going to cover? What am I going to cover? What am I going to cover? To what am I going to have the kids discover today? What am I going to help them uncover today? The how of teaching is just as important as the what. And I know there are some burning questions out there. And so I have compiled some factual questions and answers related to creating a trauma-informed classroom right there for you in your wonderful, robust handout for today, pages 9 through 13. Because I want to keep on keeping on here. My time is ticking and the strategies keep coming. So core principles for trauma-informed classrooms are summarized for you on page four through six in your handout. And some of the core principles are exactly what you're doing right here, right now. You're learning. You're here to learn more about trauma and its impact. And you've also got to keep hope alive. Believe that healing does happen and that creating a safe environment is possible. So what can you do? Well, the statistics are staggering, folks. At least one in every four students has experienced trauma that negatively impacts school success. Ay, ay, ay. Those are pretty staggering statistics. So trauma-informed care, I've summarized some ideas for you on pages seven and eight. Now, what, why should educators consider the importance of fostering a trauma-informed classroom as vital during these uncertain times? Well, COVID is not going to get the best of us yet. There are certain anxieties and frustration and stresses that has been brought on for our students. But also, don't forget you. My latest book is all on teaching leadership and teaching efficacy and how you can do self-care and the importance of your own self-care. What to do in the classroom. We've got to be responding in a kind, compassionate way. Those predictable routines are so important to praise publicly, but criticize privately. So you don't want to diss the kids in front of their peers, which are of paramount importance. Fostering that feeling of safety in your classroom. Here are eight different ways to do that safely in your classroom. And these are expanded upon in your handout, so have no fear. How you can help. Well, one thing is you've got to identify by observation, just checking the kids out, what triggers their adverse responses. Pay attention. And by doing that, we've got to look more closely at our students. Oh yes, I know secondary teachers deal with it. I teach with a lot of props and it's okay. Even secondary students love hands-on, minds-on learning. Show empathy and patience. Be firm, fair, and consistent. I wanna recommend to you a fabulous video on YouTube, available for all of you for free, Dr. Dan Siegel's Hand Model of the Brain. Now, if you all will, just put your hand up and cup your fingers over that thumb, and that's how he starts the video. Because this 
more than anything else, for those of you that are non-researchers, non-scientists, which most of us are, this is a great way to understand what kids do when they flip their lid, flip their lid. Oh, it's a great little video. If we had more time, I would love to share it with you. Here's the spinal cord. Here's the brain stem. Here's the cerebral cortex. And a lot of times our kids flip their lid. We got to look for those triggers. What sets them into a flight, fight, or freeze stance as they react to anxiety in our classrooms. And the importance of peers at every age, but most importantly, of course, it ex exacerbates at the adolescent stage, the importance of peers and being accepted. And sometimes those peer relations can also cause trauma. Now, I'd like you to reflect on the big idea today. Students can't learn if they don't feel safe. What small changes are you willing to try in your classroom, your school, your community, your practice? Because I know we come from very different roles today to foster a sense of safety among traumatized students. Well, here's some ideas I'd like to share with you to help de-stress our students. Encourage kids to have balance in their lives. Show kids, even the young kids, can start making priority lists, to-do lists. What would we do without our to-do list? Encourage kids to have stretch breaks brain breaks throughout the day. So remember when the bum is numb, the brain is the same. So they do need to take stretches. Get outside whenever possible and get some fresh air for your students. Whoops, that one got, and of course, exercise. Again, if you want those brain breaks, all you gotta do is ask me, happy to share. I have a whole book on brain-based teaching. I'm happy to share with you too. Work smarter, not harder. Oh yeah, we got to teach our kids how to do that. We've learned as savvy educators, we've learned that very difficult lesson. Time management. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The importance of being in the now, in the now, but also planning for the future. And the most important thing is give your students time to talk about it. Talk about what's stressing them out. Talk about what's setting them off. Caring can be more powerful than any academic lesson that you teach and maybe just what a child in trauma needs most. So I know that your day is so busy and so impacted, but now that many of you are on summer break, you have time to relax, press that pause button, and think of ways in which you could create more time to carefully communicate and create that caring environment for your students. Summing it up, there are four R's of trauma-informed care. Realize, recognize, respond, and resist. Let's do that again. Realize, recognize, respond, and resist. We don't want to re-traumatize them by setting off triggers. We got to resist those triggers to create a more calming, caring classroom. So what does this mean to you? What does this mean to you in your practice, in your role? 
and why the emphasis on social emotional learning. I say, why not? It's at the key to learning. Head and heart working together. That's what we've got to do. Head and heart working together. Benefits of social emotional learning and the impact of social emotional learning can all be summarized in your handout, pages 15 to 18. Also, you can see some key ideas on the slide here. Helping all students succeed is the name of the game. And that's my message, my key message to you today. Helping all students succeed, no matter what their entry point to learning may be, no matter what how they struggle, no matter what language they speak, no matter what deficits they may exhibit. I'll give you some other quick ideas. When I was teaching special ed, this was a favorite of our kids. I would give the kids a balloon. And what kid doesn't like balloons? Kids of all ages. And then I would have them put on a strip of paper, a very thin little strip of paper, what is bothering them or what challenge are they facing? They would then blow up their balloon, stick the piece of paper, the little strip inside the balloon, put their name on the outside, and find their color-coded balloon group. It's another random grouping strategy. Pop their balloon, and that's the most fun. What kid doesn't like to pop a balloon? And be able to share their challenges with each other. It's a low-stress way for them to visually and auditorily see their challenges disappear just like that. Now this is a brain break I recently did, well pre-pandemic, with some teachers I was working with in Singapore. You can see they're doing a balloon bounce activity in their small table groups. And this is just a way for them to create a cognitive break from the content I was sharing but also it's a great community builder. Don't forget the importance of self-care. That's why the flight attendants always say, grab your oxygen mask first if you're traveling with a youngster. Why is self-care so important? Teachers, take this opportunity to wallow in relaxation this summer. Now, I know one of the biggest things I hear from teachers, one of their biggest challenges is, I don't have time. I don't have time. I got all this content to cover. I don't have time for social emotional learning. You'll never find time unless you make time. All the strategies I've shared today are very low prep and don't require a lot of time. But don't forget, the other piece of that puzzle, the parents, parent professional collaboration, key to your success. We only have the kids six hours a day at most. Parents have them for the whole rest of the time. So what are some ways that we can engage greater collaboration and partnerships with our parent professional collaboration? Pages 19 to 21 gives you some great techniques for that. This is something else that you can easily do. And yes, this works just as well in a secondary classroom as it does in a primary classroom. Have a calm down corner. Notice I didn't say time out corner because that's for punitive measures. This is a calm down corner where kids go where they need to just chill. And these are some things that you could have in that calm down corner. You could have a mind jar. Now a mind jar is so easy to make. You just get an empty jar 
and go to your local Michaels or your local craft store and get a container of glitter. Fill it with water and put the glitter in there. Have the kids jiggle, jiggle, jiggle the jar. And then they slowly watch the glitter go down to the bottom. It's a meditation tool. It's a breathing tool, but it's hands-on, minds-on learning, and it helps to calm them down. Breathing, breathing is another very important factor to consider in trauma-informed classrooms. We also need to figure out how to foster a growth mindset. Another workshop I do is all on fostering grit and growth mindset. We got to praise effort. And it's not so much how excellent the final product is, it's the effort they put into it. It increases their motivation and helps to foster that growth mindset. Change your words, change your mindset. So I have a bulletin board. I had one in my classroom when I was a practicing classroom teacher. Change your words, change your mindset. And when I heard kids doing put downs with each other, I would point to this bulletin board as well. Mindfulness practice. Oh, we just don't have time. There's so many ideas, so little time. Well, if you don't have time, just try it one day a week. Maybe Mindful Mondays. Have Mindful Mondays. I said the importance of breathing. Okay, here we go, folks. I want you to do a lion's breath three times. What do I mean by a lion's breath? It's what I learned in yoga. Oh, it's very cool. You take a deep breath and just like a lion, you let it roar. <gasps> oh, is that cathartic? It feels so good. Try it. You'll like it. And have your kids. It's a great stress release. Oh, no. Ah, yes. Oh, no. Ah, yes. Oh, no. Ah, yes. You got to turn that frown upside down. So many different activities. Teach the language of empathy with your students so that they can understand how they can support each other. Now, I want to pause a bit right here, right now, to chew it over. Of the 27 strategies I shared so far, what do you think? What did you learn? How can you use it? I was going to have you share in the question box any questions that you still have percolating in that brain of yours. But I want to share with you a final structure called the last word. I want you to think about our time together and what we have accomplished in the past hour. And I want you, now this is what I do in the classroom, even for the, the older kids, the younger kids, I have them form a community circle at the end of each class period. If we were together today, I'd have you form a circle. And I want you to think of one word that describes how you're feeling at the end of today's session, at the end of this webinar. One word, and the kids would do it popcorn style. They'd do a shout out of their word and they would affirm each other with a snap, snap. So everybody leaves feeling affirmed and heard. But since we don't have an in-person workshop, we're going to do a structure called a chat waterfall of words. So I want you to think of one word that describes how you're feeling at the end of today's webinar. One word only, that's the only rule, one word how you're feeling as a result of today's webinar on trauma-informed 
teaching, I am feeling one word and put it in the chat box and they will all appear very quickly like a waterfall. And Liz, maybe we'll do a little shout out as the words appear. Okay, get on your mark, get set. The waterfall is starting. As a result of today's webinar, I am feeling Liz hit it. Excited, awesome, empowered, positive, thoughtful, motivated, informed, ready, energized, encouraged, curious, uh, enthusiastic, so equipped, right. confident, Thank excellent. Thank you. I give you all the clappers. Oh, yes. Thank you for playing along with me. My word to you is hope have only positive expectations. As you leave today, keep hope alive. Have only positive expectations. Turn the impossible to possible, the unable to able. Instill that can-do spirit, because remember, you are flossom. Oh yeah, that's a made up word. It's a combination of fabulous and awesome. You are flossom. So impress your significant other tonight with saying, hey, honey, you are flossom. I want to leave you with these three initials to remember our time together. And then Liz will come on with some previews and momentarily. TNT. And besides standing for dynamite that I hope you thought this webinar was, TNT stands for today, not tomorrow. Be the best teacher, counselor, administrator, librarian, superintendent you can be. But remember, you got to walk that walk, talk that talk, be that be, and do that do. And don't forget the magic you have inside of you. This may be the end of the webinar, but it's only the beginning of your journey to creating a trauma-informed classroom for your students. Please keep in touch with me. And that's my email. It's on your handouts as well. I've also included several pages of resources for additional extended learning opportunities pages 22 to 25. But now I turn it over to my buddy, Liz, who will give you coming attractions for Saddleback webinars. That's right. We always have to know what's coming up next. Before everybody signs off, hold on. Don't go anywhere yet because I want to let you know who's coming up next week. Next week, we have uh, Dr. Cash and Dr. McKnight. So Katie and Richard, they've been here before. They're coming back, back by popular demand. And this time their session is going to be leading students from independence to self-direction. So it's one thing to have an independent learner and it's another thing to have a self-directed learner. How do we go from independence to self-direction? Why is it important, especially now when students are coming back to buildings after being at home so much? So you can register for this on our website or you should be getting an email shortly um, prompting you to register and we'll have all the information that you need. Also keep in mind if you do need your Saddleback High Low books uh, digitally on an ebook platform we do have a, an on-demand webinar available with information about our platform on our YouTube channel so definitely check that out and now we want to send you off with uh, an uplifting song and video so uh, Dr. Perez is going to take it back for a minute and then All we're right. uh, just a minute. Gotta keep the energy going. Yeah, we got to keep the energy going. Here we go. It's time to keep hope alive and most importantly, celebrate. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Hang out and enjoy the video. Kids from all over the planet.
through it all for years. So bring your good times and your laughter too. We can celebrate your party with you. Come on. Celebration. Let's all celebrate and have a good time. everybody we'll see you next week and thank you kathy for doing this for us absolutely my privilege thank you liz all right take care everybody we'll see you next week bye <laughs>